Hey everybody, it is me, Natalie Diaz, founder of Twiniversity and author of What to Do When You're Having To. Can you believe it? We've made it to week 36. Congratulations on your big three six. I want to jump in immediately to all the great things that we should do this week. Make sure things are wrapped up. Oof, it's a lot. I'm so excited. Let's get into it. All right, it is here, week 36. I hope that you are still here with me. I imagine you are if you're watching this or maybe you're watching this a few weeks ahead. Either way, congratulations. I know you are not the most comfortable right now. So even if you have been doing your prenatal yoga and going to swim class every week, I genuinely know that it is not so easy being 36 weeks pregnant with twins. That's a lot of humans you got sitting in there on your organs and I'm sorry, but I wanna help you make it a little bit easier. So the first things first, okay? Let's talk about the things that we need to make sure that are done. I'm hoping that your nursery is all set up and ready to go. And if you don't have it ready to go because you have just been behind or maybe something happened that was very distracting, it happens. Don't get stressed. Remember, it's only too late if you don't start now. All we really need to have is a few things washed and cleaned and ready to rumble, the cribs assembled if that's where they're gonna be sleeping. If not, maybe something like a twin nursery center or some other kind of vessel that they could safely sleep in if your cribs aren't together a place for them to sleep, like a room, whether they're sleeping in your room or their room or even in the dining room, which yes, many people have space issues, especially because you're having twins and maybe, you know, they're worried about you going up and down the stairs. So you may have to set up a makeshift kind of bedroom. Is that ready to go? Are the car seats installed? ready to go? Did you read the manual? Did you read your car manual? Are you sure that they are exactly where your car would like them to be? Have you filled out all the paperwork for your doctors and hospital to make sure that it is a flawless transition and getting the babies added on to any insurance plans that need to have happen? Are your bills set up for automatic bill pay? So if you go into the hospital this week and you have to stay there for two weeks till delivery or four weeks till delivery, really depends, is everything set up without you having to worry about it? Did you take your classes? Did you take your first aid safety class? Did you take a breastfeeding class? Have you done all that you need? To, I really would like if you did that. Now, if we have all these things done, let's start talking about some good stuff here. Not that that was bad stuff, but you know what I'm saying. It's let's, let's get into the good stuff. So at week 36, your doctor is probably discussing either an induction or a C-section and we're really planning full steam ahead. And I wanna give you some tips on how to make this a little bit easier if possible. First, if you're scheduled for a C-section, have you had a discussion with your doctor about your pain management plan? Second, did you ask them if you could be the first case of the day? So what happens is, is if there is, if your doctor's scheduling like five C-sections that day, which is totally possible, probably like around three, but you never know, really. But if they schedule a lot of people and you are number three on the roster of C-sections, if case number one and case number two get delayed, that's a long time for you to be waiting around. So I always recommend that if you are having twins, hello, you're having twins. I think you're having twins, right? If you're not having twins, what are you doing here? But thanks for stopping by. That's kind of cool. If you're having twins, it might take a little bit longer and you really never know what's going to happen. So if you ask to be the first case of the day, then you know that you're not going to be delayed by the other two cases that were before you. Also think about this. If you are the third C-section of the day, they're going to tell you when to stop eating. And usually it's going to be after midnight the day before. You're gonna be starving if you can't eat until the next afternoon. Just because you're having surgery doesn't mean that you're not gonna be hungry and the babies aren't gonna be demanding some cheese and crackers. Now, if you're having a delivery and you are going to be in the OR, and by the way, you will have to deliver these kids at some point. Whether it's a C-section delivery or a vaginal delivery, talk to your doctor about those preferences that you had. And I do want to go back and say that I know we said, like, I want you to have the delivery that you have, which I really do. I want you to have the delivery that you want. I really do want you to have that. However, of course, anything could change at any time. So that is why I always say it's kind of like a birth preferences, not necessarily a birth plan. 
because we could make the best plans and then the doctor could say, yeah, that's not gonna happen. So in the OR, whether you're having a vaginal or a C-section, have you thought about playing some really good music? Yeah. You could ask a nurse to say, hey, here's my playlist, here's my phone, could we plug it in? Ask the doc about that because they don't hate it. All the doctors that I personally have known that have worked in surgery always play music and they may have a very obscure playlist, but for a C-section, you are going to be part of that. Well, like if you're having like hip surgery or something, you, you're not necessarily gonna choose your playlist because you're not gonna hear it that much. But with your C-section, think about it. Maybe you just wanna play the soundtrack to The Lion King, so when the twinnies are born, they could hold the twinnies up like Simba. That would be pretty cool. So think about a playlist, maybe the song that was playing when you and your partner met, maybe the song that was playing, you know, the day that you found out you were having twinnies. Music's really pretty cool. So think about that. Next thing is you could pack some essential oils in your hospital bag. I actually always have some with me because I am a wackadoodle. And what I do is if I am, if I know I'm gonna be someplace that I am a little anxious, what I do is I just put a few essential oil drops on my finger and then I just rub it underneath my nose and that's it. And guess what? Now everything smells beautifully like lavender because that's what I have today. And there's no reason why you can't do that. During your labor process, during delivery, essential oils are pretty nice. And there is a very strong connection between scent and memory. And so how awesome would it be if you remembered your 20s, you know, the day that your 20s were born every time you walked through a beautiful field of lavender? Does anybody do that? I've never actually walked, I, is, yeah, it's a plant, right? I've never walked through a field of lavender. I'm adding that to my own to-do list. Now, for my partners, are you paying attention right now? Now, I know I told you to pack your own hospital bag, but I wanna, I see your own hospital bag and I raise you, do not wear a t-shirt or a polo shirt underneath your scrubs. Probably they're gonna give you scrubs that are either gonna button up or zip up in the front. And if you wear either a button down shirt underneath it or no shirt underneath it, when those twinnies come out and start having some celebrations into the world, in case mama bear can't have skin to skin time with them, you can. But if you're wearing your Led Zeppelin t-shirt from a 92 concert, you're not gonna be able to get them on your skin as much as I would really like if you did. And with C-sections and vaginal deliveries, you could be in that OR longer than you anticipate. It's not a bad thing, but they're not rushing you out. It's not like there's a clock and they're like, okay, we have this OR scheduled from this time to this time, so we have to make sure that they're out of here by that time. That's not how that happens. We don't know. Mother Nature it plays a role in this too. And if it takes a little bit longer, it takes a little bit longer. So may as well be comfortable with some good music, be comfortable with something beautiful, sweet smelling, maybe some tangerine, lavender, eucalyptus, something. And by the way, do not have that be the first time that you try that. Because try that at home for quite a while to make sure that you don't have any skin interactions with any of the essential oils that you're buying. Your partner could have some wonderful skin to skin contact with them while everything is happening. There's so much great stuff that could happen, whether it's a vaginal delivery or a C-section delivery, you still have control of this. This is pretty cool. There are some items I, say, I should say that you have control over, but you can make it a nicer environment for the day that your 20s get here. And worse comes to worse, it never hurts to ask. Now for week 36, I wanna talk about your physical comfort. If you are very uncomfortable standing, um, studies show that sitting is probably best for you. I actually don't know if there's a study on that, that I'm, I'm just literally making that up now. If it hurts when you're laying down on your side, don't lay down on your side. If it hurts when you're on your back, don't lay on your back. Find wherever you are most comfortable and realize that it may not be in your bed. You may have to sleep in a recliner. You may have to sleep, if you bought a rocker for the kiddos room, hopefully you bought a rocker and a half because a traditional rocker is gonna be really tight to kind of breastfeed to on that if you're planning on breastfeeding. But you may just be comfortable someplace else. Find out where that is and get some rest. Kick your feet up. That is a lot of baby in you right now. And it's a lot of stress 
on your organs and it's a lot of stress on your bladder and there is a lot going on. And if your partner does not understand anything and they are like, I don't get it. Yes, I know you're big. That's my traditional partner voice. Then could you go grab them for a second? Okay, I'll wait. I don't have a watch on today, but I'll hold. Okay, hey partners. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but your your 20s are going to be here soon and pretty soon. I mean, really anywhere I would expect within the next two weeks tops, but you never really know depending on how many kids you may have had before. So if you are noticing that she is very stressed, could you help her out? Could you not wait till she asks could you get her water? Could you make sure that she's eating? Could you rub her feet? Even if you hate feet, put on some gloves, put them under a blanket and rub them because it's a lot. This is a lot of hard work that she is going through to keep these twinnies in her and she really is doing so fantastic. So I hope every day and I imagine, I imagine every day that you are just in total admiration of what she's doing, not only for just the, the amazing humanness of it, but what she's doing for your family. She is creating your next generation. That is your legacy that is in there. Those little babies that are in there right now, kicking her until she is exhausted, could be the babies that change the world. How amazing is that? That's, that's you. You guys did that. So just cut her a little slack if it has been hard and just know that I am, I'm so excited for you guys and I know that you know it's gonna be different and I know that you know it's going to be great, but you have no idea how great it's gonna be. And it is, it's gonna be fantastic. And typically people are so negative when they find out that you're having twins. They're like, oh, better you than me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah whatever. Don't hate the player, hate the game. We're the lucky ones and we're having twins. And when you have twins, amazingly, even if you have older children, you will never, you will feel bad for anybody that had a singleton because it's just that incredible. So I am so happy that you both have made it here to the big old three six. I can't wait to see you next week for week 37. If you should deliver this week or anything happens, no, I am waiting for you on the other side because we have so much more to get you ready for once your twins are here with feeding schedules and, you know, oh my gosh, we actually have an entire schedule packet of like 17 pages on Etsy that is just for your first month with twins. We got you covered but I will see you next week. If you need more of me and you're like, Nat, it's not enough, don't forget we have our classes, maybe even take a live class. It is not too late to take a live class or our on-demand classes or the breastfeeding class or join us for a monthly meeting or read my book. Maybe don't buy the book at week 36. It actually might be a little bit late. Save yourself the 17 bucks. Don't buy the book this week. But we got you covered in a lot of different ways. And remember, if you have something that is stressing you out today, email me at community at twiniversity.com or you could drop us a direct message on any single social platform. We are literally just at Twiniversity on all of them. Enjoy the rest of your week. I am so happy that I got to be with you yet again. I will see you next week or on the other side of this amazing adventure. But until then, see you later, alligators. Thanks for watching. And please, if you love this video, go ahead and subscribe so you know when our new videos are coming out. See you later, kids. Have the best day ever, and I'm really proud of you.